time, on Sailing Kitty Wake, we restored the bright work and teak decks on our 40-year-old blue water sailboat. In this episode, we repaint the cabin, recover our cushions and show you our homemade fuel polishing rig. Yesterday it was five years since Ryan and I met, so we left the camera home and went to Valencia, which is about two hours from here and had a paella and had a great time and uh, out of the blue Ryan asked me to marry him <laughs> and of course I said yes um, after all we've been through two boat refits we must be bomb proof by now and yeah I'm really really happy um, he gave me this uh, aquamarine engagement ring um, which uh, apparently he didn't know <laughs> but um, it's the sailor's lucky gem stone um, so apparently it's meant to bring you uh, calm seas, favourable winds and just generally good luck with sailing. Uh, so that's a really lovely coincidence and yeah, we're going to be busy planning a wedding. <laughs> so the deck of the boat, originally it seems like it was covered in some sort of like um, grit, coarser than sand. Um, and I think when it was first done it was probably really good but over the years people have painted over it and painted over it and painted over it and there's a really thick layer of paint so all of that initial texture um, has completely gone so um, it's also quite heavy because even though it's not um, it's too so it's like really really thick it's over a big area and it's um, relatively high up on the boat so we don't really want all that weight up here if we can avoid it. So we're going to take it off and just put a normal um, deck paint over, so like an interdeck or something like that. But removing it is quite difficult, I have to use the heat gun and the scraper um, and it's really slow work so I think you'll probably total up to about 10 days worth of work just to um, scrape the paint off the top. Um, and then we'll prime it and then put the deck paint on top of that. After using the heat gun to get off all the um, non-skid texture, I'm just using the sander to kind of clean up all the remaining bits, make everything nice and smooth because it still kind of left behind quite a lot of texture that was in the paint underneath. And then the bits around the edge where there wasn't actually non-skid texture, it was just kind of smooth detail bits. I'm just sanding that so it's not shiny anymore so that the new paint will adhere to it. So there's also a small few repair bits we need to do where I've gouged the gel coat a little bit with the scraper. Um, they're quite easy to do, I've just filled them in with thickened epoxy and I'm going to send them back. So I'm just starting to mask up um, in preparation for priming and then putting the deck paint on. Today is painting day. We're gonna paint the cabin top and the cabin sides and the cockpit combings. So we're gonna start off by masking everything.
So the paints that we wanted to use, we couldn't get them in a sort of off-white colour. They were in sort of normal-ish whites. So we've got a little bit of yellow ochre pigment and we just mix a little bit of that in just to take the edge off the brightness. And we just got that from like a local painting shop. So we did, you ready? Yeah. About we did three of those. One. Yeah. Two. And a bit more in three. Three. Yeah. Do you want to explain where we have this weird mixer? Oh uh, yeah, they ran out of mixers in the um, chandlery. So we're using some bits of old pine trim. We probably wouldn't use them on the boat anyway because it's all um, hardwood, so good job I kept hold of it for a day like today. Today we're going to apply a second coat both to the cabin top and the cabin sides. Here's what the cabin top looks like after one coat of interdeck and this is one coat of top black on the cabin sides. Today I'm going to touch up some of the top sides which have been rubbed against either fenders or other boats or docks. Um, it's just a cosmetic uh, thing so no big deal. I'm using International uh, Perfection 2 pack hard paint uh, which is the same as what's on at the moment and it's a uh, cream colour. That was the worst area of them all. Um, obviously there's still tape on it. Uh, it's looking better. It's not perfect, but we're not going to any beauty contests. So I think that will work. The long and cold winter evenings were perfect to get used to living inside Skua. One of the projects I've been busy with is recovering the saloon cushions and that's because one we really don't like the uh, burgundy red type color and some of them have some big stains and uh, we're not very happy with them so I just grabbed the cheapest uh, fabric I could find so two euros fifty per meter because I'm not very confident sewing at all um, and so I can learn with this and then in a few years time if we have the money we can recover them with um, better quality fabric these are the ones that are uh, finished. We were a bit daring and we went with the white because that was the cheapest and we thought it would really brighten up the um, environment inside the boat. Uh, so because of that I'm very adamant that we have a throw on the seating um, cushions. To make the project as cheap as possible we're reusing the existing foam. These cushions used to be tufted so they had buttons going through which has left some deep holes and we're going to try and bring those uh, back as much as we can with steam. We're also reusing the uh, bottom plate which is this breathable sort of plasticky fabric. So 
now I've got the top plate, all the four sides, and all I need is the bottom plate. As I've got quite a lot of sewing projects to do on the boat, uh, there's 15 cushions just in here. There's the bimini that we need to build, potentially a new spray hood and potentially a cockpit enclosure. We decided to go for a sewing machine so that it's not going to take me the whole of my life to do them. For us, the um, Sailrite machine, which is what everyone seems to use, um, was cost prohibitive. It was way too expensive. So we went for this um, much, much cheaper machine. I think it was a 135 euros on Amazon uh, in Spain. And it's meant to go through jeans and tough fabrics, so that should provide enough strength of the machine to um, sew through at least canvas. But I also hope sails, because that's another sewing project I need to uh, do, fixing some of the sails. And it also has the right sort of stitches, so it's got a zigzag stitch. Um, well, actually two options uh, of zigzag, so I'm hoping that we'll get away with using this much cheaper machine. This is actually the most difficult part. Go on, you can do it. <laughs> Let the cushion do the work. Yeah, right. <laughs> The covers are removable so we can wash them a couple of times a year. So this is the fuel polishing rig that I've built. Um, this is a 12 volt pump that I got off of um, Amazon and then I've connected, um, I think this is called a separator. So it's got like a filter in the top that you can kind of replace, um, or sorry, not replace, um, clean yourself. And then you can undo this and then take that out and get the crud out. So the fuel comes from the tank up through this separator, through the pump, and then into this, which is like a fairly standard filter. I think it's called a CAV type filter. And then, so it goes through there and then back and the idea is that um, if there's any crud at the bottom of the fuel tank, particularly below the fuel pickup line for the engine, then you can filter it out, just get all that junk out. Because what um, I've heard of happening and what happened to Patrick Lane was that um, if you go out in rough seas and your fuel tank gets shaken up, then all the crud which is on the bottom kind of goes into circulation and then clogs your filters which is a bit of a problem because then you can't start your engine. So it's better to get all that um, stuff out of the bottom of the fuel tank and also get out all the water because if there's any water then that can lead to getting diesel bug. So this is kind of something new that I'm learning because our old boat didn't have um, a diesel engine, it had a petrol engine which is less of a problem in terms of um, those kind of things. So yeah, at the moment I'm just kind of sat here with the intake, which is this thing, trying to kind of like get it at a point where it's getting any crud out of the out of the bottom of the fuel tank. Thanks for watching. These videos are made possible by our wonderful patrons. Join the crew to get access to Patreon exclusive content. Join us next time as we continue to refit our new to us Tayana 37 to get her ready for cruising.